Hey yo, what is up everyone? It's SNT here and welcome to a brand new video here on the channel. Today, I'm starting up a brand new series on this channel and it's gonna be a Q&A series where I'm gonna answer some questions that you guys ask. So sometimes it's gonna do random questions and sometimes you're gonna do filmed episodes. For example, today we're starting off with a filmed video about this Ray Aurora right here, the finished building, because I realized there was a lot of questions that had to be answered so i asked you guys on the instagram and you guys really wanted to see a q a about my radio rr so that's where we are at today so if you want to have your question featured in an upcoming video make sure you follow me on instagram at sctmoro and i will post on my story when i'm going to do a q a and if you're excited to see this series make sure to leave a big fat thumbs up so if you guys are wondering why the bike looks a bit weird right now it's because if you didn't see the video earlier this week it's in uh, transport mode so because we need to fit it in the van and the van was pretty small so we need to lower it to the back and put a small wheel in the front but that's gonna be fixed if you follow the channel in the upcoming weeks we're gonna turn this into a working ray rr first question is how did we get the rims to look so good i think this is one of the things that made this bike come together is the polished rims so a lot of people are wondering how i did it and how you can do it for yourself it's actually not that hard it's just that it takes a lot of patience and a lot of work it took like a week to do both rims i think and working every single evening so first off there are aluminium rims they're not chrome rims if you have chrome rims you need to well it's not doesn't really work what i'm about to say but if you if you have aluminium rims this works so what we did was we sanded it down with first a really like rough sandpaper and then uh, smoother and smoother to we got a smooth surface uh, that's really smooth and then after that we took a what they call it swedish a lump quiva which is uh, i think it's a stitched buffing wheel in english and then we use some lump wax which is stitch wax that that's definitely not the right word but like uh, buffing wax or something like that i guess i gonna show you guys so i'm back right here so what do i used this is the buffing wheel that we used it's like this soft um soft wheel and we had this on like a screwdriver well, not a screwdriver a drill and then we just use it on the wheel and then also this is the wax that we use so what you do is just spin it around in here a few times and then you spin it around the wheel and after a while it became this nice but of course it has to be no paint on the wheels and it needs to be aluminium if you have chrome rims use for example out of soil and then you try to get it back but aluminium rims is definitely the way to go if you want a polished finish. Besides the rims, the most frequently asked question I got is about the paint. What paint it is, how did I get it so good, what it cost, all that kind of good stuff. So that's what I can answer right now. Okay, so how we did the plastics and made them look so good is we sanded them down with uh, wet sandpaper, but I don't uh, use the liquids on them, I use them dry, which is kind of weird, but I feel like it works better if I use them dry. So you sand it down with wet sandpaper and then fill out all the imperfection with some filler uh, to get this super smooth surface. After that, we use a good primer because if you don't use a primer, your paint is not gonna stick. So be sure, even though you're cheap, invest in a primer, it's really good to have. And then after that, we use some real car paint. I bought it from a store in Sweden called All the Center. It's a really good store to get car paint from. And car paint is way better than BLTMS uh, paint or anything like that. Get real car paint. You can get them in spray cans. Do it. It's worth it. It's going to last. I mean, my red derby right here on the side, we didn't use clear coat and that. And the paint had hold up really well. But I do recommend having a good clear coat as well. So we have the Alfa Romeo metallic red car paint. I don't really know the color code. I could probably check it up, but I don't have it right now. But it's a metallic red from Alfa Romeo almost the same ingredients as a uh, candy red and when you use a me metallic car paint you need to have a good clear coat so we have one component car paint and then we got used a two component clear coat for car paint on top of that all the plastics are painted with a spray can everything's painted with spray can no like real painting equipment just spray cans you need to be really careful and be really pa patient with it, but it works out, it turns out sick. It's, you won't be able to believe that it's painted with spray cans. It's really good and uh, that shows that you can get good results with the mi most minimum equipment. 
and also the forks, I don't know if you guys can see them, but the forks are painted in Volvo Safran's yellow. I just gonna put out the translation for Safran, I don't really know what it is. But uh, Safran's cool, Safran's, yeah, translation right there. It's a really cool paint, gives that like dark gold orange paint. And I feel like I went for a classy look, so therefore I used uh, polish rims, a metallic red paint job and gold forks. Some people said it wasn't matching. In my opinion, I think it looks super cool. If you like think about like the kings back in the day, they were red, dark red like coats and stuff. And then they had a gold it looks really cool and that was the look I was going for, the more classy look, not the supermodel look where it's just flashy with graphics kits and stuff like that. So the next question is something I got especially a lot when I was at the MCMS Sun, the motorcycle convention, which this bike was on display at. A lot of questions about if I had started it, what's the top speed, how much power does it make, all that kind of good stuff. So if you didn't see my reveal video, I don't have an oil seal on the right side of the engine in this bike, therefore I have not started it yet. But when I do, I'm going to make a first startup video for YouTube so you guys can see it for yourself. Because I'm super excited to start this off. This is the first time I'm building with anything bigger than 50cc. And it's going to be insane. I'm super excited to start this thing up. Um, I'm guessing the top speed is going to be like 120 km an hour. It's geared to have a balance between acceleration and top speed. Of course, I could do a crazier gearing and get a lot more top speed. But I feel like 120 should be good enough. I have 1348 on an 85cc top performance cylinder with 26mm carburetor. I feel like that should be a good like base to be honest. Because I still want the acceleration and stuff like that. And for power, talking with people that know they're estimating it to be between 15 to 20 horsepower. Which is well enough for a moped. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And also... If a lot of people are asking me if I'm gonna make any riding videos or what my plans are with the bike. So my plan is to get it started and uh, since it's a cast iron cylinder you need to break it in driving a long distance. I'm not gonna personally ride it because I don't want to risk getting caught. Because if it's a cast iron you need to break it in and you can't go full throttle and all that kind of good stuff. So I don't, I'm not gonna ride it too much. I'm gonna do a test ride outside my house and stuff. But other than that I'm not gonna ride it too much. I'm just going to tune the carburetor, get all the last things situated on this bike to make it perfect and then I'm going to sell it. So hopefully I sell it to someone who can take care of this bike. But it's probably going to be sold within the next month or two so I can buy some new projects, big bikes and stuff like that. Because I'm super excited to move over to other stuff. But it's been a really cool build and I'm super excited to see what we can do with it. Of course there's still going to be videos with it, not any crazy riding videos if that makes sense. So hopefully you guys understand that. And uh, yeah, but still, it's a pretty cool bike. There's also a lot of questions about my part selection. Why I went with a cast iron cylinder, why I went with ICR Corsa 7080 exhaust, and stuff like that. So if you didn't see my when I started this build, when I talked about it before I got started, this is a budget build. It's using parts that you can find cheap. For example, the cylinder kit was supposed to cost 400 euros with the cylinder kit and the crankshaft. I got it used for... 180 euros, brand new, that was not even used, and also the exhaust, I got that for like 150 euros, so that's crazy, so that therefore there's the selection of parts, and a lot of people are asking me if I can get better parts in the future, but since I'm not going to ride this bike, and I feel like this is going to be a street setup, probably, I, I'm not going to say it's going to be riding on the street, but I, I assume it's going to be, so 26mm carburetor, racing cylinder, and an SCR Corsa exhaust, it should definitely be enough, for some street use and also some track use if you decide to take this thing to the track. But uh, yeah, of course you could get like a Vida Lot factory exhaust and Yasuni R4 exhaust, but that's not needed, that's just overkill in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I think for being a budget build, I'm gonna make another video where I break down the price of this entire build. You guys gonna understand why I went for the parts I went for and uh, get as much performance and looks as possible on a really low budget. Also another question that I got from Gnagsar on Instagram, he uh, asked me if uh, I know the weight of this thing. I think I think it's like 90, 95 kilos stock and I think I removed like 5 kilos, maybe plus a little bit extra, so, so around 85 to 90 kilos I would guess this thing weighs right now. I would, I'm just going to make a good guess and say it's 85 kilos right now 
as it's when it's all the things are on the bike. So 85 kilos, I think, is the weight with 20 horsepower. I feel like that's a pretty good power to weight ratio. Not as Nagstar's 500 cc that's gonna weigh like 100 kilos and has like 0 0.7 horsepower per kilo, which is insane. Which is more like more than a Lamborghini. So that's crazy. Shout out to Gnagstar, go check him out on Instagram. Uh, he has a pretty cool 500cc two-stroke build going on right now. But yeah, definitely not as crazy as his bike. But for being a moped, I feel like... Wait, what is it? Like, the waste point... It... Boring! Another question is, will this thing be able to beat other hyper builds? I feel like it will be a fair race, but since I'm not going to break it in, I'm not going to race this thing, I'm not going to do top speed run with it. So, uh... Yeah, but hopefully once you guys buy it and take real, well care of it, I can let me know all that kind of good stuff about top speed and stuff like that. Another question I got is about if I was going to make a tuning story or a breakdown of the build and how long it took me to build this thing. So, yes, I'm going to make a tuning story when the bike is sold because then I know everything that happened and stuff like that. So, I did a mistake with my Ray MRX to make a tuning story before I sold the bike. Which I'm not going to do again, I'm just going to make the tuning story once I sold the bike Because that's the easiest Because, well, things happen after you completed the project They need to fine tune that you didn't really expect So, I'm going to wait with the tuning story until the bike is sold When we know everything that's happened with it And also, time to build, it was 30 days to build it from this to this And I'm pretty proud of it And that is definitely my fastest build yet even though my other builds take longer, but this was just every single day, non-stop work. And this would have taken longer, but since we're on a tight time schedule to get it done for MCMS Sun, this is my fastest build yet, and it's probably my best build so far. And also, the price to build this bike will be broken down in another video. If you guys want to see that, let me know that in the comment section down below. But I think it would be really interesting, because you won't believe how much this bike has cost to build, including the purchase of the bike. I mean, let's, let's just have a guessing game in the comment section down below. How much do you think this bike has cost with purchasing the bike, building the entire engine up with 85cc top performance, cylinder, crankshaft, clutch, carburetor, intake manifold, all that kind of good stuff, exhaust, car paint, painted entire frame, all that kind of good stuff. How much do you think this bike has cost from start to finish? That would be a pretty cool guessing game in the comment section down below. But that's going to be it for this video. Let me know how you liked this Q&A style video. I'm really excited to make more videos on the channel. And I think this is definitely a cool addition to the channel. So you can get to know each other a bit more. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a big fat thumbs up. And if you haven't already... Make sure to subscribe to the channel because do not want to miss the videos I've got coming up when we get this thing started and stuff like that. I'm super excited to do that and also get back into riding, doing wheelies and stuff like that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, stay awesome, be positive, it's be a and I'm out. Peace. We can make it off rapping, it just takes a little work. I just need a nice beat, start snapping, write a verse. Working every night till my vocal cords hurt. Flow so tight like my church fitted shirt, uh. I'm just working every moment till I take flight. New sights, bright lights.